All right, thank you so much. So let's kick this off, if slides will cooperate. We got it? All right. So take a trip down memory lane with me. Do you remember the first time you ever did anything in the social change space? Go back. Maybe it was a club, maybe it was an organization, some project you got involved in. Do you remember that really clearly? I know I do. I think many of you probably do too. Let me tell you about my first time. This was mass CPR training. I was 19 years old and I didn't know anything about CPR. I didn't, wasn't in health and safety. I was studying astronomy in university. Not really the best fit, but a friend of mine that I knew from where I grew up said, hey, we need someone to help out with this CPR training program. So I didn't know what it was. I wanted to do good. I jumped in and did it. And I think many of you might resonate with this. Six months later, 17 people, uh, 1,500 hours, and we had our first training done. 151 people trained in adult CPR. Oot. It was a good time. Uh, we did some good. The program is still going on. It's 10 years old plus now. So I'm somewhat proud of that, but also I'm not. Uh, I learned after I started doing this, three years in, turns out CPR is actually not that effective. <laughs> so even with best trained people you can get, right, good timing, chances of survival are very, very low. Not to say you shouldn't do it if you're trained or you know what you're doing. If you see the opportunity, do take it, but you shouldn't get your hopes up. So turns out CPR is good, but maybe not great. So what is great? Well, here's one that is extraordinarily good. This is one of the best things humanity has ever done. We eradicated smallpox in 1973. So this killed 300 million people, which is outrageous. But by eradicating this, this global effort, we saved another 60 to 120 million people after that. To put that in context, if we had achieved world peace, we would not have saved as many lives. So smallpox is a pretty damn good thing to eradicate. Uh, gives you some perspective. Definitely could not have saved as many lives with CPR as doing smallpox work. But this was taken out before I could get to it. So what about something more current? Uh, how about malaria? So maybe you're not interested in health, but if you want to save lives, um, there's an organization called Against Malaria Foundation. And they're really good at distributing bed nets. And what these bed nets do is they help protect you from malaria. Uh, and their lower bound cost for doing this to save one life is about $3,300, which is an extraordinarily cost-effective way of doing it. Now, if for some more context, um, U.S. government occasionally will have to rate or value a human life. Do you have any idea how much that's valued at? It varies, but oftentimes it's around $7 million or so. So this is a pretty damn good thing to do. So AMF, uh, Against Malaria Foundation. That's one powerful thing that I discovered that if you think strategically about what you're doing, you can make a lot more impact. And so this is exciting to me. Um, but it can be exciting to you too. You have to rethink things. So I'd ask you to go back to that first moment and imagine that you could start over from scratch. Imagine you have a blank slate and you can do pretty much anything you want to do. How many of you would do the same thing back when you were younger? How many of you would do the same thing now? Like this path that we all get on, um, it's a sometimes a strange serendipitous path. You don't necessarily know how you got there. I know I would do things very differently now because I've learned a few things after doing this for more than a decade about how to do good better. Um, so this uh, brought me to something I found extremely exciting. Um, this is the effective altruism community. So EAs, uh, this is why we're here to learn a little bit about this. I discovered this a few years ago and it changed my path dramatically. So effective altruists um, are combine evidence and reason to do as much good as possible. It's a new philosophy and a social movement that is really picking up now. So it combines both head and heart. The heart motivates us to be empathetic and do good, and the head guides those actions to try to make them well-directed and strategic. Um, it's really the scientific way, to, scientific way to doing good. So it's brand new. Um, the term was only coined in 2011. Um, this was out of a group of philosophers in Oxford coming up with terms to describe what we're doing that was like super do-gooder and whatnot, and eventually they came up with this term. Now, obviously there's a lot of history behind social impact and doing it well, 
But uh, this does seem like a new um, phenomenon that's happening. And so Peter Singer, who's here, uh, gave the first TED Talk on this in 2013. And he's one of the most famous moral philosophers around. Uh, and more recently, we've had people like Elon Musk and uh, Peter Thiel and Kerry Tuna and Dessa Moskowitz come on board with their time and their funding, actually putting in billions of dollars to doing EA organizations and causes. So it is a really exciting time to be in this space. And how do you do this? Um, this is just overall general, what do you do? Uh, because it's such a new field, a new concept, we're still learning, we're still defining this. But there are five basic questions that seem to be helpful. Uh, for thinking like an EA. Uh, one is just something we ask ourselves a lot, how many people uh, benefit and by how much, right? We're trying to get as many people as we can and help them the most amount that we can. Pretty simple. Second, is this the most effective thing that I can do, given my experience, my skills, and given the need? Is this really the best thing I could be doing? This one is actually hard to confront sometimes. Uh, another one is, is this area neglected? So if you're jumping in and doing great work um, and other people are doing great work too, your marginal impact might be smaller than you expect. So it's something that happens. Uh, another consideration is a counterfactual. If you didn't do this, what would have already happened? If you're digging a well and you leave t tomorrow, will someone else dig it for you? Like, is there someone else that could do it? You have to think about what actually happens if you're not adding your effort. And then lastly, um, what are the chances of success and how good would success be? So thinking in terms of expected value and getting as much as you possibly can, these are exciting actually to think through this. So I thought through these questions even re recently this year and pivoted dramatically from what I was doing before, which was behavior change events and interventions to really getting involved in the community and had the honor of coordinating Effective Altruism Global uh, this year. So from two years ago when there were 60 people crammed into a single house to last year when there was 180 people crammed into a conference center in Berkeley to this year 825 people across three cities, San Francisco, uh, Oxford, and Melbourne with Elon Musk keynoting, it's uh, been quite the honor. And what this showed me, uh, helped me rethink my own efforts is that there's a massive opportunity to do good with corporates and, and funders. So we talked to over 100 um, and got them introduced. Many of them were not yet thinking about effective altruism, but they were interested. They came, they spoke, they partnered. So they wanted to get their feet wet, which is very encouraging. So this leads me to my final point, is that I think effective altruism is this extraordinary opportunity uh, for all of us to rethink how we're doing good and try to do good better. Um, it's, humbling to think about this, rethink about this, and try to get deep into the research and to the critical thinking to do it better. But the people we've talked to recently are interested, and especially the funders, because it's a lot easier to move around a little bit of capital if you just think more strategically, but also you, everyone, how you're spending your time. So I look at this as an opportunity to find ways of doing more good within our own domains or switching out to something completely brand new. Uh, and that's just an exploration that we all get to take. This actually may be the best time in history to be alive to do social change because there's so much need and there's so much uh, capacity now. So if you are at all interested in this sort of thing, uh, as I am now, please check out the website. Uh, EffectiveAltruism.org is the portal into the community. There's a few thousand of us around the world and growing fast. And because I now think this is so important to do, I'm happy to help you on that path uh, and guide you to what might be something uh, that's powerful for you. And uh, with that, thank you for your time, and I hope to see you on the social change path. Cheers.